Hey guys, I'm David Dispinat with MediaLock.net, and today we're going to be talking about the Sony Color Science. I own a Sony Alpha A7 III and a Sony Alpha A7R III. I switched over from Canon roughly four or five months ago, and I've been extremely happy with my Sony so far. One of the th issues that I am having though is that the color renditions, especially as a photographer, the color science is, is pretty poor in my opinion. Um, and some of that I think has to do with Sony and some of it has to do with the way that Adobe handles Sony's uh, RAW files. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through a story and then kind of explain to you why I found that I think Lightroom is a bad option for people wanting to edit their Sony pictures versus Capture One and why I think you should probably switch to Capture One if you're using Sony cameras. As uh, far as video goes, S-Log3 or Cine4 works really well if you know how to color correct, so we don't have a lot of issues in that aspect, which is really, really nice. So here it goes, guys. Um, a few, about two and a half months ago, I shot a wedding for a bride. It was the first wedding I'd actually shot with the Sony cameras, and the pictures came out, I thought, quite well. Um, I did use the Metabones for some of my Canon glass, which operated very well and was quick and focused the way I needed it to during the wedding. Um, I get home, you know, say a week or two past, and I get, get through, and I, what I do is I catalog everything um, in Lightroom, which I love Lightroom's cataloging software. It is amazing. It's very, very awesome. However, I catalog everything, then I go through and I pick out the pictures I like, which I pretty much just five star every picture I want to edit, which is usually I shoot a thousand, I'll keep about two or three hundred. Uh, once I've done that, uh, I go through, I do base edits in Lightroom, and then I'll usually do 10 or 15 special edits and I'll throw it over in Adobe Photoshop. So I finish up doing the edits, send them over to the client, and uh, about two days later, about a day later, she's looking at them, she's going, why do these photos look so gringy and green, green and grimy and gringy? And I'm like, what are you talking about? They look fine on my computer, I don't have any issues with them. And I was just thinking maybe she wasn't doing something right or was trying to re-edit them or something like that. So we talked back and forth. I have to actually get on the phone and talk with her. Thankfully, she is a friend, so she was really patient with me through, this, through the next couple weeks, uh, probably a week or so. Um, and so she had just gotten a new phone, and she thought, well, maybe we thought maybe it was just her phone. So she got a friend's laptop because she doesn't own a laptop, and she found out that the laptop... Uh, still gave her that same look. However, I wasn't getting that on my end with my laptops or, uh, or my desktop computer, so I could not figure out why her colors weren't looking good. So then she went to Walmart and printed them out, and they didn't look good still. And they had a real green, dingy look to them. And so now I'm starting, to, I'm, I'm starting to think, well, maybe it isn't her. Maybe it's somehow the way I exported it or edited them. And so I started doing a little bit of research about the Sony cameras and Lightroom, and I come to the conclusion that Lightroom does not process RAW or JPEG Sony colors very well, especially with the export. They may look good online, they may look good um, on your computer, but when you go to print them out or certain devices or phones, they don't look, they don't, they're not color accurate. So we have a local camera store called Murphy's Camera here in Lexington. And so I thought, well, I'll go up there and, and see, you know, I'm like, they can probably fix the issue if it's, if it's not software related. So I take up my, my edited pictures, put them on their computer, and we take a look at them. And before we even print them, we look at it and we're like, oh my God, these look horrible. The colors are way off. So I'll, now I'm starting to get worried because I'm thinking, I've got a bride here and I've got 300 pictures that are unprintable at the moment. So I didn't know what to do. So I started doing some research online and I really, I just find out that, that Lightroom and Sony don't, they just don't play well together. Adobe has not done a good job building their software so that the Sony RAW files and JPEGs and their colors will, will work and give you color accurate. Now with Photoshop, it's much better, but it still is not perfect and it's really frustrating. And everyone's saying, go to Capture One, this is where you need to be at. The cool thing about Capture One is it's like $90 for the pro version if, you, if you're a Sony user. So if you just wanna use Capture One for Sony purposes, um, 
the awesome thing is, is that you, um, you only got to pay 90 bucks instead of like the two or 300. So I'm going to, what we're going to do is we're going to transition over to the screen here. And hopefully you guys can see some of this here. So these are, I had her, had her send me a screen capture of what her photos looked like. And look at these. These look absolutely horrible. They do not, I mean, these is how, this is how this really looked on her phone. These are not how they looked edited. Um, so what we can do is, we can hit, I think there's, there's another one. There's a picture of the groom. And again, look at that green tint. This one's not the worst, but the colors are just, they don't look good. And these are exported out of Lightroom, uploaded to Google Drive. She downloaded them. We thought maybe it was a Google Drive issue for a minute. She downloaded them and, um, and then was looking at them on her phone and she was freaking out. As you can see, this is like her phone right here because she's taking these screen captures. I think I've got another one. Uh, again, if we scroll in, I mean, these just, they just don't look good at all. And I couldn't figure out why these colors look so bad. Now, if we actually, so let's go over here and let's go to desktop and let's look at some like, they look fine here. So we can scroll through a couple here. And these colors aren't that bad coming out of Lightroom. Um, so these are actually brought in from Capture One, so Lightroom might have recolored. These are the final edits, and I had to go back in and re-edit all the pictures in Capture One, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. But I brought them into Lightroom just because I thought it'd be easier to kind of scroll through. Lightroom's cataloging software is just amazing. And so, I mean, these look, these look fine. They, they don't look like, you know, if we've got any weird green tents. They don't look dingy. They look the way they should. Uh, I love Lightroom's cataloging software. However, uh, going back to these, they, these just don't look that good. They, they had this, and this is what happens when I export it on Lightroom. So the more research I did, the more I found out Capture One's where it's at. Now, as a whole, I think Capture One is a better editing software, but it is a little bit slower. Um, so that's kind of frustrating. And their cataloging system is just horrible with Capture One. Absolutely horrible. But if you're shooting Sony, from what I can tell, Capture ones where you need to be editing and then you can do your final edits over in Photoshop. You can just send them over to Photoshop or you, what I do is I export them as a, a PSD uh, or a P, you know, a Photoshop file. Um, I export them as a PSD and then I re-import all the PSDs in Photoshop and then fine tune the ones I want to. Um, and then the ones that I'm going to be sending to clients, I'll just export as JPEGs. And actually the exporting software, the way uh, here's Capture One. The way that it does its exporting is quite nice. So if I wanted to bring some files into Capture One, let's see here. Let me let me scroll and drag and drop. Let's see if I can find the. Here we go. And we can drag and drop these in, and then we can bring them right in. All right, into Capture One. Um, again, their cataloging software to me, for me, is. I'm not, I don't like it whatsoever. Uh, but sometimes you, you got to deal with this. And I think, yeah, sorry, the, uh, it's going into two screens. So we'll import all those or bring them in. And I have a lot more control over my colors. Uh, the nice thing about, there are some really cool features about Capture One that I found uh, worked really well with. And I don't have all my stuff set up on this laptop because I don't really edit on this laptop too often. Mostly I edit on the desktop. Um, and let's see if I've got, no, I don't have my color. Where's my colors at? Color editor is really cool. So you can select a, a picture here. And I really find this pretty awesome. If the color editor will open up, but the computer may be getting bogged down trying to do uh, live vlogs and then show all these files. Um, so long story short, the ride was awesome. It took us like a week and a half to get everything figured out. Um, we did, I did end up taking a, an un, un edit. Pretty much I loaded a, a picture into Lightroom, a picture into Capture One, and a picture into um, Photoshop. And then I exported them all as JPEGs with no color correction, no editing or anything. Then I took them over to the local camera shop, uh, Murphy's Camera here in Lexington, Kentucky. I let them upload them and we took a look at them and we found 
that the Lightroom files that were exported looked horrible. The Photoshop's looked pretty good and anything that came from Capture One looked the best, was the most color accurate. So in my opinion, you guys, if you're shooting Sony, Adobe does not work well with the Sony color science very well, the Sony colors in RAW or JPEG. Uh, as of right now, maybe it's going to get better. Maybe it already has gotten better in the, in the two months, but I don't believe it has. Um, and I'm not going to take the chance of giving a bride some pictures. You know, maybe I could go get some printed and see. But if you are having issues with Lightroom, it very well could be Lightroom. Um, and that if you switch over to Capture One, in many ways, Capture One is a superior editor. It's just not as quick. I just can't get through the photos as quick as I can with Lightroom. For some reason, the way Lightroom is set up, I'm able to do these mass edits really quick. And it's very, very helpful. Where Capture One, it's a little bit slower, but I can, I can produce a higher quality image, I think, for the client. So I guess we can, you guys are just sitting there staring at her. Let me switch back over to me here on the camera. Usually I have someone doing this for me, so I apologize, guys. But that's, that's kind of my story. Um, I'm not going to, there isn't much more for me to dive into. I don't understand, uh, you know, the actual intricate reasons why Lightroom isn't processing my Sony RAW files that well. Um, I don't know if other people are having this issue. When I've looked online, a lot of other people do seem to be having this issue and there doesn't seem to be an answer really. Uh, also, Sony's colors just aren't as, as nice and vibrant as, as Canon and I'm realizing that. As a videographer, hands down, the Sony cameras I absolutely love. I love their autofocus system. Um, I love having S-Log3 uh, or Sony 4 and I love how I can color correct my video. Um, However, when I'm shooting photography, uh, sometimes I miss my Canons because their colors are just so amazing. I love the Canon colors. And Lightroom and Photoshop read those colors, read those files a lot better. And I could, I could go back to using Lightroom if I had a Canon. Um, I'm forced to learn a whole new piece of software, which thankfully I have a good grasp of Lightroom and it made it very easy for me to get a good grasp of Capture One because um, I know how to use Lightroom and Photoshop very well. So. That's kind of what I have to say about the Sony Color Science. Um, we'll chill out for a minute, see if anybody wants to pop in and ask a question. I know we really weren't on here, but maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. This is on a long live vlog. Um, I want to do something simple. Kevin was supposed to be doing SEO this week. Maybe he'll get around to it next week. Uh, last minute, he actually picked up a shoot. And so I had to scramble to come up with a topic like an hour before this. And I really kind of wanted to talk about my, my issue with uh, exporting files out of Lightroom and finding out the colors aren't nearly as nice as they should be. And, and I mean, if, if I have some Sony shooters out there and you guys have found a way to get nicer, cleaner, vibrant pictures out of your Sonys or been able to go in and change settings, I would love to know what they are. Because as of right now, from what I can find on the internet, um, you really can't mimic those Nikon and Canon colors out of a Sony. And Sony's, their own color science just, it's way better than it was, but it's still not there. Um, however, Sony has so many other features like high ISO, um, you know, their uh, high shooting, I can shoot like a crap ton of pictures for like, I don't know, like 100 pictures in 10 seconds pretty much um, at, at raw, full buffed before it like, it takes a second and has to catch up. So like there's many features about the Sony cameras, the two Sony cameras that I love. And I'm really, really happy that I decided to uh, stick with Sony and I, I switched over to Sony and I'm not, not wanting to go back to Canon. Uh, I just wish the colors were a little bit better. I'm able to tweak them and get what I want pretty much out of Capture One. So that's the good thing. Capture One allows me to get what I really need. So uh, yeah, you guys have any questions? Um, feel free to ask. We'll kind of hang out for a second more, see if anybody's over on, um, no, nope, nobody over here on Facebook. It looks like we're a little out of focus on Facebook. I apologize, guys. And of course, the full version of this will be available sometime in a few hours here on YouTube. But thanks for stopping in, guys. I appreciate it. As always, I'll catch you next time.